Doing Work with the Jerk is the title of today's episode. Dave hauls his boat way up into northern Ontario to throw his jerk bait in front of some grouped up small jaw. Little dude, but I'll tell you what, I don't know what I'll tell you. I mean, it's just something you say when you host a show. I mean, I, little dude. In a land like no other, on a lake like you've never seen. Well, maybe you've seen lakes like this. But there is an angler so great, he once set the hook so hard he turned a small mouth into a large mouth. He can unscramble an egg. He made his first cast at the age of three and it landed yesterday. We join him to chronicle one day on one lake. This is Facts of Fishing, the show. Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Abu Garcia for life. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Phoenix Bass Boats. Experience the Phoenix difference. Out here graphing these points that uh, all of these smallmouth are stacked up on and you know it totally amazes me over and over again just how incredible side imaging and mega imaging is. I mean what you can see on your graph just blows me away. Obviously we have a camera boat out here and if you look on that graph right there you can see the prop stream from that boat. I mean, it's amazing. You wonder if you're going to be able to see a fish with this. You can actually pick up the prop stream from a boat in front of you. Wild. Oh, I knew they were on that point, man. That's not a big one, obviously. <laughs> marked them on the point. Oh, come here, Junior. It's time of year, man. These fish, they are changing and changing quick. You can show up one day and hammer them on jerk baits, and we may still end up doing that. But man, just sometimes you got to slow down. The weather's changing and so are these fish. Look at Mega Imaging, man. That's the fish swimming down. I just released it, and there it is sitting on the bottom. Wild. I gotta get gloves, dude. Oh my God. Two gloves. Both the same hand. They're great gloves. Work better with their matching partners, but they're good gloves. This segment is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. Here comes a fish cast. Evidently I was wrong. You gotta be so, so careful. One of the worst things you can do 
is when you're tying your knot, is to get that knot stuck in the joint of the split ring. You get it stuck in the joint of that split ring and you are asking for troubles. Just similar to like if you're my scissors. If you're my scissors, you are perpetually troubles. Oh, on the floor. Fish. You smoked it. See, little adjustments. Just need to be a little bit deeper. I mean, I've been working that jerk bait and I've just been straight up over their heads. And in clear, clear water like this, I mean, summer months, yeah, they'll they'll charge up. I mean, come on, get on the side of the boat. In the summer months, I mean, they'll charge up in that deeper water and get that jerk bait. But it's a little adjustment like that. Getting that bait to run a little bit deeper. And he's gone, but that's okay. Man, what was that first, second cast with this deeper running bait? And the question you gotta ask yourself is was that the sign or was that a decoy? A little bit deeper. And I mean, the crazy thing isn't that I caught a fish, it's the way that fish smoked it. When they hit it, you know, with such insane veracity, you kind of feel like they're not alone. I mean, it, it, they're hitting it like that because they're trying to get it before their buddy can get it. There's a bunch of fish below us right now. There he is. Never ever pass up a fish. I mean, th this is, uh, there's a bunch of them down there. And that's a pretty good one too. <laughs> when you mark a fish, it's no different than seeing a fish, you know, blow up in your top. Look, look, look what they're spitting out. Perch right there. You see that perch? Chumping big baits. It's not a giant. That's a decent fish right there. But as I was saying, you, you see a fish, you mark a fish, always, always throw to that fish. Get him on hook, because I, I got a feeling there's more than him right there. So what I'm gonna do is, Spotlock is holding me, so I'm good. I'm gonna cast it up there, back to where I marked those fish. I'm gonna turn my live well on. So he doesn't spook any of his buddies. I'll let you go in a minute. But that is a trick. I mean, you get on top of the fish and a group of fish, they will warn their buddies. So don't be afraid to put it in the live well. Hold on to them for a few minutes. Are these fish gonna let me build ants? I'm, I mean, I'm not afraid to build ants. I, I, I don't know what you tuned in for, but if I could just kick back right here and Bill dance these fish, I'd be happy. I mean, we've done focus groups. There is nobody tuning in to Facts of Fishing to see my spry movements, which I actually found quite shocking. All right, they're not gonna let me build dance them. in today's episode were threaded using the RTD rod threading device. Fish. 
Man, I was hardly moving that jerk bait. Oh, gone. You want to talk about polar opposites. I mean, that first fish on the jerk bait smoked it, and that dude, you could just feel him push it forward. Was hardly moving that jerk bait at all. There we go. Ah, oh, easy, dude, easy. Again, just hooked on that last hook. Easy, you ain't that big. I got another hook in him. See how that fish is just hooked on that last hook? I mean, they are just slowly swimming up and nudging that bait, basically. But as long as they keep munching it somehow, I don't care. Technology in this sport, I mean, it gets better and better every year. But I'll tell you, it is crazy how many groups of fish I've started catching since I started using Ultrax. You know, just being able to spot lock, you know, those last three or four fish, every single one of them, the boat did not move an inch. And I think, you know, it's not like the fish are grouping up more now. I just have noticed that's one of the advantages of it. You know, you just become a better angler in the way that your boat's not moving. So in the past, you know, it wasn't like I'm finding more groups of fish now. I was on those groups. The difference is my boat kept drifting. I didn't stop on enough stuff, but just having spot lock, I mean, it makes you work an area so much more thoroughly. Just cause it's easy. I mean, you're looking at wind today. I mean, this wind is blasting right down the pipe at us. And if I didn't have spot lock, I'd be fear ever on the trolling motor. And the fact that it becomes easy and I can just spot lock here, just makes you a more efficient angler, really. I mean, when you think about it, your buddy's running the trolling motor, you're focusing more on working your bait. And that's exactly what spot lock is. It's a fishing buddy for guys like me that don't have real buddies. It's either a bigger fish or he's hooked funny. Oh, as he is pulling. Oh, it's a bigger fish. It's a bigger fish. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a good one. Oh, look at the size of this fish. Oh, man, look at the size of that fish right there. Oh, you don't think he's feeding up for winter? That is an absolute chunk right there. As soon as I hooked that fish, oh man, I knew either this fish is hooked funny. Sometimes you get a small one and they'll be, you know, hooked in the side and you're just pulling a lot of pressure. I thought it's either hooked funny or it's the right kind. And I'm thankful. That dude right there was the right kind. Earth fish, another good one. Easy, easy. I mean, they are all sat right on that edge. And it makes good sense too, really, when you think about it, you know, oh, easy. Why are they sitting on that edge? I mean, this wind is blasting right down the pipe at them. It is delivering the food. Got lucky with this guy. He got an extra hook in him. Come on up here. There we go. Little dude. Big, small. There is a bunch of these fish packed up. 
right on the edge of this point. And if I gotta go through a few little ones, a few tiny ones to get the big ones, it's a job I'll take. I mean, I gotta do it. I mean, it's like being the mailman. I mean, you think he likes delivering the mail to that house with the yappy dog? No, but damn it, he does it. And if catching small fish is my yappy dog, then I'm willing to do that for you guys. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. fish bigger than I thought. <laughs> when I first took him, I thought it was a little rat. But he's growing. Ooh, easy. Move back here and grab him. You see how you're playing that fish? I mean, it... It's important always when you're hooked up with a fish on a treble hook bait. But it's even more important in the fall of the year. I mean, you want that rod to be an elastic band. You want that rod, get out of here, to take the load of that fish. I'm gonna tell you, when you come up north and you're catching these big smallmouths, you need to have a give factor. You need a little bit of a zip there and uh, plain and simple. The drag on a spinning reel is so much smoother. And that's why I use it. You know, you pair that with a very soft rod and you let that rod do its job. Don't uh, overwork these fish. You just slowly want to get them back to the boat. Oh, here we go, another one. Another one. Man, they're loaded here. Loaded. And the cool thing about, you know, a jerk bait like this is if you play them right, one of those second hooks can uh, be your insurance hook. Easy. And exactly what I'm talking about just happened. I got the insurance hook. So I'm grabbing him upside down. Little dude. But I'll tell you what. Whew. I don't know what I'll tell you. I mean, it's just something you say when you host a show. I mean, I, little dude. Um... I'll tell you what, I'll do this all day. I mean, I don't know why we say that crap. I mean, we get the fish for a living. That's probably why. Get out of here. Let's get some more. Another one of those things, see? Get out of here, let's get some more. It's one of those things you just say. If you, if you host a fishing show, I mean, I probably didn't say those kind of things growing up, but then you host a fishing show, and next thing you know, you say stupid crap like that. Oh, there's a fish on the pause again. Another one on the pause. Little dude, little joker. We ain't got time to mess with you. We are not putting up with a snot factor of 7.5 to catch fish like you. I mean, he's not even quite twice the size of my bait. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be pro-anglers. Let them be doctors and lawyers and all kinds of stuff. Oh, no. You just gotta sing to them, that's all. Well, that's, I evidently, I was singing the wrong song because that dude is not the one I was hoping for. Well, I'll take him. I mean, I'll take him. Can't say no to that flatworm. 
Look at the little fish we can catch. Really grinds my gears. You just don't hear enough of it nowadays. You just don't hear enough people saying, hey, let's tune into the show where they always catch the tiny ones. Way too much of today's society is judged on being a gargantuous creature. I mean, it's time an angler can get proud to just post a freaking Facebook picture of a tiny fish. Not get made fun of by his friends. Dave fished for six hours, made 292 casts, and caught 16 fish. That's it for the score. Now time for the facts. Dave used a live target rainbow smelt deep diving jerkbait, fished on an Abu Garcia Veritas spinning rod with an Abu Garcia Revo Ike spinning reel spooled up with 8 pound test Berkeley X5 braided line with a 6 pound test Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon leader. Dave also used a Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent Flatworm rigged on a Trocar TK150 drop shot hook with a Wu Tungsten half ounce drop shot pencil weight. Fished with an Abu Garcia Fantasista Premier spinning rod, paired with an Abu Garcia MG Extreme spinning reel spooled up with 8 pound test Berkeley X5 braided line with a 6 pound test Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon leader. And that's the facts.